Hey everybody, Adam here for True North Wilds. As you can tell by my homeless look here, I am still on vacation. I am actually about to head out catfishing on the Red River, which is famous for its channel cats. The Red River at Lockport is known countrywide and even throughout the states as one of the hottest places to catch big channel catfish in anywhere. It's amazing there. I'm going a little bit downstream from there. I grew up in this area and so catfishing has always been a real staple of mine. I'm heading out today. Uh, I figured before I go I would spend a couple minutes and just give you a quick rundown of the rig that we use here most commonly for channel catfish and I pull in big channel cats on this rig. So I'm going to give you a quick rundown of the setup, the gear and how to tie it um, and as well as go over some of the baits that I'm taking with me today which are sitting in the sun over there getting nice and smelly. So first up, let's talk about gear. I have my heavy action Rapala, it's actually a musky rod, but it serves double duty as a nice heavy catfish rod. I will go down to a medium heavy, depending on how energetic I'm feeling. They fight really, really good. If you get onto a big catfish, you need a good, thick, stiff rod with lots of backbone that you can actually fight them and pull them up. They can weigh up to 30 pounds in some cases for the big ones, but 25 is pretty typical. 25 to 30 is very common. You want something that can handle that. So I have this heavy duty Rapala musky rod. I have a Shakespeare reel on here and I have it spooled with 65 pound suffix braid, suffix 832, 65 pound braid. This is a bit overkill. You can pull in a channel cat on a medium rod fishing for walleye. I've done that plenty of times where I accidentally bring in channel cat on a walleye rod. It's just not ideal. This is a little bit overkill. A medium heavy is a nice, um, it's a nice compromise. You can go down to 20 pound braid easily. You'll still pull them in. It's just a bigger fight. Typically I will use 25 pound to 35 pound either braid or mono depending what I have on hand. I just happen to have this spooled up with 65 pound, so it's gonna be more than enough for channel cats. There's nothing wrong with going overkill. It's better to have too much strength than not enough and break off and lose the fish. So that's what I'm running today. Now, as to the rig itself, we use a very simple I'm not even sure what the rig itself is called. We just call them catfish rigs because this is pretty much the most common rig that we use here. This rig comes off your main line and you can see I've got a weight and a plastic bead and a swivel and a nice long lead to a hook. A hook, a bead, a weight and a swivel is all you need for this rig. It's a very simple rig to set up. So first up, obviously you need a hook. We use these circle hooks with the point turned uh, sharply inwards, as you can see here, um, a lot of times, and that just prevents a lot of the fish from swallowing the hook, and it just makes the hook sets a little bit better. But it takes a little bit more skill to actually set the hook with that type of hook. So a lot of times we also just use these more traditional J-hook style with the point turned outwards. Today I was using circle hooks just because I know there's drums and I don't want them swallowing the hook. Next up you need a plain plastic or glass bead of any sort. Doesn't really matter. I have these uh, cheap green plastic ones. And then you need a barrel swivel. Basic barrel swivel, brass, nickel, whatever uh, your choice of swivel is. But you want it to be fairly large. We're using some pretty large line. And then of course the last thing that you need is some weights. So it depends on the current in your area. Uh, you can use anything from a one ounce or even less if there's no current in a shallow water uh, up to a three, four, five ounces. It really just depends on the area, the area that you're at. But we have a pretty strong current here in the river and it's kind of a windy day so I'm using a three ounce weight. You need the slip style weight that the line can go all the way through. So step one, uh, you put your weight on first 
um, just put your line all the way through it. Make sure you have no jagged edges on the weight and that your line actually moves freely through the weight. You don't want uh, any spurs or anything that might cut your line. After that, you want to put the plastic or glass bead on and same thing, just make sure it moves freely uh, on the line. The purpose of the glass bead is to protect your knot. So that glass bead sits underneath the weight. So when the weight is moving up and down your line and slamming back towards your swivel, uh, it's not putting any pressure or potentially cutting the line or the knot. The glass bead just sort of protects it from any, again, any potential uh, jagged edges or spurs. So then you tie your swivel on. The best knot for braid, of course, being the Palomar knot. So you put your double line through, make your loop. You basically just do an overhand knot. Very simple overhand knot. And then you take that loop that you made and you put your swivel or whatever tackle that you're using through that loop and pull it all the way through. And you can see there, and then you just clean it all up, pull it tight. That loop snaps down on top of your knot. This is a extremely, extremely easy knot to tie, extremely strong. And with braid especially, which some knots tend to slip on braid, the braid uh, doesn't slip through this knot as easily, uh, if ever. So that's the knot that I always try and use for braid. Of course, trim it down, clean up your knot. Now you have a slip weight with the bead and the swivel. Nice and simple. You can see that bead there is protecting your knot from the weight and just again from any jagged edges. You definitely do not want your uh, line to be accidentally cut by your weight and if you're in a rocky area especially using lead weights where we are um, that lead can get deformed pretty quickly and can make some spurs, make some jagged edges pretty easily when it starts banging off the rocks. And then the last step, of course, is to attach your hook. So this is where you choose your leader length. Um, whatever length the, for the conditions that you're doing, um, choose your leader. Cut yourself a little bit extra to account for the knot tying. And whatever length you choose, you tie on your hook, again, using the Palomar knot if you can. And then attach it to your swivel. So you have your weight, your bead, your swivel, a long lead, and then your hook. Nice and simple, and that is your catfish rig. The ones in the store typically come shorter uh, as far as leaders go, one to two feet. I like a longer leader, three feet at the minimum, four feet, five feet, sometimes I'll go, depending on where I'm fishing. Today I'm going on the kayak, and the longer lead, actually, if you get too long, can become a detriment because as I'm holding my rod up and trying to grab the fish out of the water, if it's a too long of a lead, I won't be able to reach the fish no matter how high up I hold the rod. So today I'm running with about a three foot leader, which is about the minimum that I like to go. So the idea behind this rig, this slip sinker style of rig with the swivel and the long lead, in the Red River here where we fish for these catfish, it's very muddy bottom, it's got some rocks in it, and it's a fast current. You need to be able to put on a large weight, but you don't want your hook and your bait sitting down in the mud. So that's the purpose for the long lead. The weight gets it down, it sits on the bottom, the long lead allows the current to take it out and it floats up in the current and all around and it gets the movement and it gives the scent off and the catfish, because they're following the scent, will come in, follow that scent and be able to find your bait. If your lead is too short or if you just hook your weight right beside your hook, everything is sitting down in the mud and it'll sink in the mud and get lost in the mud. The Red River is a very silty, muddy, bottomed river it's it's pretty gross to look at uh, it's got this gross brown color from the silt but that's why we want the long lead and that's why so many of the catfish pre-rigged systems that you can buy in the store just don't work here they're too short they don't account for that massive amounts of silt and mud at the bottom and they don't give your bait enough room to actually get up into the current and spread the scent out 
So I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of the baits that I'll be using today and just sort of why they're so common around here. When it comes to channel cats, the stinkier the better. So I've actually had them out there sitting in the sun, thawing out. They were in my freezer. I wanted them thawed out quickly, but I also want them to go a little bad. The stinkier you can get your bait, the better. Now, a lot of people have perfectly fine success using basic baits such as uh, night crawlers or minnows or things like that that you would uh, typically use for other fish. When you want to get onto a big channel cat though, the key is size. You want a good size chunk of meat. So the first and most common bait that I'll be using today, and this is a go-to for a lot of people around here. This is just a super common channel catfish bait. They always bite on this, is uncooked jumbo prawns. I have a bag of them here that have been in my freezer for a while. They're freezer burnt. They've been sitting out in the sun. I can feel they're all squishy. They're gonna stink when I open them up. Catfish love them. When you're looking for a bag of prawns to use as catfish bait, prawns or shrimp, you want the biggest that you can find. If they still have the shell and the tails on and the legs and all that stuff, even better. Uh, the more raw, the more unprocessed they are, the better. And the biggest size that you can possibly get is gonna do well for you. This is one of those baits for catfish that works year round. They kind of go through phases where they prefer certain baits sometimes of the year over others. Shrimp or prawns is one of those ones that's always going to work for you throughout the year. It's a very reliable bait. As a bonus, if you don't mind a little bit of bycatch, um, you can also catch a lot of freshwater drum on these as well and sometimes bullheads and things like that. So if you're just going out for a day of fishing, targeting catfish, but you like catching other stuff as well, very, very good choice. I have here a Cisco or a Tulabi as it's sometimes known. You can also use sucker fish. You can also use gold eye. Same idea, it's a cut bait. So this was sitting in my freezer uh, for a long time now. It's thawed out, it's smelly, it's gross. You can see I don't wanna touch it. I'm just holding it through the bag. I'm gonna basically take an ax to this and just cut it in chunks. Big, thick steaks. You hook your hook through that. The nice thing about a big chunk of cut bait like this is if you do the appropriate size, you will get big catfish. You don't have to worry about the bycatch of the drums and the bullheads and things like that. They just don't have the big enough mouths. So I'm talking big steaks. When I'm talking of cut bait, that fish is gonna go into maybe five pieces, like big, thick pieces, just enough that you can put your hook through the back. A catfish's mouth, one of the big catfish that I will be catching, the mouth is like this. Freshwater drum, bullheads, smaller mouths, so this big bait, this big cut bait, don't have to worry too much about nuisance fish. You will always only get the big fish. The downside is it depends if the catfish are preferring that bait at this time of year. I don't know yet. I won't know until I take this out and try it. With channel cats, you kind of have to experiment and you have to see what phase they're at for the year. It can switch from one day to the next Usually there's a period of a few weeks where they're on certain baits, but you gotta go, you gotta experiment. You gotta see what they're on. And if they're not on anything, then you can always go back to the shrimp. That's your go-to. The last bait that I am taking today, and this is something that is a little less common. I don't see a lot of other people using this as a bait, and this is liver. Chicken livers is more of a common one. If somebody's gonna use liver, chicken liver is kind of the go-to. I've had great success using beef liver. Today, I'm going to try deer liver. This is deer liver from one of the deer that we got last year. And it's been in the freezer, it's vacuum sealed, it's been thawing out in the sun now and I can feel it, it's all mushy. I can almost smell it through the bag. If beef liver works, and it always does for me, I see no reason why deer liver shouldn't work. I'm looking forward to trying this out. But even if this was beef liver, it's the nice thing about liver is you can get it at the store. It's very cheap. Usually it's a couple bucks for a pack and you get a big styrofoam tray. It comes in big chunks so you can cut it to whatever size. You can have the big chunks of bait. You don't have to worry about bycatch. You're not going to catch drums on it. You're not going to catch bullheads typically as long as you go big pieces. And because liver is so naturally just bloody and enriched with those nutrients and that smell, you get that nice scent trail. The current, when I throw a piece of liver on, 
especially after it's been sitting in the sun on top of the kayak for a while, hook it up, throw it in the water. That current takes that scent and it takes that blood and it makes that trail. The catfish follow it right in. So if the cut bait isn't working, if the shrimp are a little bit on the slow side or if I wanna experiment a little bit, I try a liver. Usually I have some pretty good success. It's not a common bait around here, but I've always done well with it. So I'm hoping to do well today. That's it for today. That's all of my tips that I have as far as what I'm going out for today to catch some big channel catfish. I'm gonna go pack up. I'm gonna head out there, meet Colin on the river, and let's see what I can catch. We got out on the river and we got onto some pretty good fish. So before I show you those, just a reminder, you can leave some comments down below if you have feedback or if you have questions about catfishing in general or the Red River area, um, definitely let me know down there. I always try and reply to anything that I see. If you're not already, don't forget, you can follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash True North Wilds on Instagram at True North Wilds and of course our blog site, truenorthwilds.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a lot. Now, uh, here's some really nice catfish. Enjoy. Thanks for watching, and as usual, I'll see you outside.